Hello everybody, today we're analyzing the game against the Russian Grandmaster Pavel Trugubov. As always, this is Beating Gems Part 6, and let's start the analysis. My accuracy in this game is 82.5, his is 80.4. D4, knight f6, knight f3, bishop f4. As you already know from many other series, this is the London system. C5, striking at the center. With the idea of queen b6 and queen takes b2. Here, e3 is a good move, which I played. c3 is also a move, but c3 denies the possibility of getting the knight here to c3. So that's why e3 is a bit more flexible. b6, trying to fianchettle the light squared bishop. c3, bishop b7, knight bd2, d6, h3, the tucking away square. Tucking it to the bishop to h2 from any knight h5, and the bishop gets trapped. So, he followed up with bishop e7, bishop e2, castles, castles, knight c6, a4, maybe later on a5, a6, or he takes b6, opening up the rook. Rook e8, bishop h2. I tuck the bishop back right now because he might have e5. Attacking my bishop and now my bishop is safe bishop f8 knight c4 the idea of knight c4 is to take on c5 and If he takes the b pawn, I have three attackers He has two defenders and I should win the pawn, but if he takes with the d pawn I exchange the Queens place a rook on the d file and the d6 square is weak So he played d5 knight e5 knight, queen c8 knight takes bishop takes knight e5 Bishop b7, a5, bishop a6. Here I had a slight advantage the whole game, but here I missed an opportunity, like a mini opportunity, to try to keep my slight edge with c4, pawn takes, and something like knight takes c4. And after the exchange, I have slightly more active pieces. All my pieces are protected, and I'm slightly better. But I did, I did not play that. I played pawn takes b6. The reason why this is bad is I open up the A file, but it's not needed right now. And here I should play C4. But I exchanged and brought the queen out to E2. The point why this is not the best is he has C4. He locks up the queen side and is ready for B5, B4. And really irritating me. As you've seen in Beating Gems Part 5, this really sucked for me. So, I played rook takes a6, queen takes a6, b4. This is a terrible move. The reason why I wanted to play is queen b2, rook a1. But as always, he has a way to counter it, and this is just a terrible move. Because it weakens the c3 pawn, which can be targeted so many times. But... Here I fold up, he folds up with rook a8, rook c1 guarding the pawn, queen a3, queen e1, and here he played queen a2, an inaccurate move. Queen b2 was better trying to get the rook here. Here I had a chance with knight g4, knight e4, f3, knight d6, and here is about equal. If he takes the knight, which is best, I take and I have better chances with the knights off, and the knight won't target me. It still is slightly preferred for black. This is the final position on the top engine line. I think with best play, it should be holdable, but it's a very close call. But he didn't play that. He luckily played queen a2, but I missed and didn't punish him. I played f3 to try to stop this knight from coming into e4 h5 stopping knight g4 queen f2 offering a queen trade it was better to keep the queens on for example with knight c6 he took i took he took he he checked me i moved back the reason why this is bad is my rook is tied to this pawn because if i move away he'll play rook c2 and gobble it up my king is tied to this pawn on g2 and he can do whatever he wants. He can grab space here. Or even long term, he could get the king all the way into my position. 
with rook c2 taking and taking the pawn. But here he played a different move, which was the move h4, getting some space. I played bishop g1, just waiting. He played knight h5 with the idea of knight g3 check, attacking the king. And if I move, he can give another check and take the pawn. Everybody's falling apart. The bishop's trapped. Pawns may get weak later on, but he played. But I played bishop f2, g5, e4, trying to open up something because I'm desperate to do something. He plays bishop d6, knight g4, and here he makes a mistake. Here, just bishop f1, it's game over. I move my rook to b1, let's say. He plays rook a3, collects the pawn, then. He can collect a second one, and I'm just lost. Two pawns down with a terrible position of all my pieces. But he luckily missed it. He played knight f4. I took on d5. I should have played rook b1, but either way, it's lost. Here he has knight takes d5, and I'm just lost. But he played f5. The point of f5 was when my knight moves back to e3, which is the most logical square. He takes on f2. King takes knight d3, forking my king and rook, and he wins a piece. But, shockingly for him, I have some compensation with my pawns. Here on knight e3, another move that was best was pawn takes, but it hangs a pawn. If he takes with the knight, I take that pawn on c4. I thought about knight d3, but here I just have rook c2, and I'm fine. Even though black loses no pawns... He will lose upon eventually with this. So, knight e3 is just bad. So, he played rook takes f2, king takes knight d3, check, and knight takes c1. Here, I take the pawn. This should be a drawn end game. Bishop g3 was better activating the bishop, but he guarded the pawn. I took the pawn. Best was to push up to d6. So, why? On bishop to, let's say, b8 d7 bishop c7 i have knight e5 well he has many moves for example king f8 knight c6 and i'm threatening queen and the bishop's gone and it's just equal but i took the pawn which is inaccurate he should have tried to bring bring the knight back and tried to target the pawns but he played king f8 i played knight e3 attacking the pawn he played king e7, another mistake. Here he should have played b5. I really don't understand why. I personally would like to play knight d3, but the computer doesn't like it. It says b5 and knight d3. So first, for b5 is an important move to so maybe take the pawn and the pawn's fixed, but he played king e7. This is a mistake because knight d5, and after king d6, he's having some problem. On king d6, I push the e7, and on king d7, I take the bishop. He cannot take my knight because of a queen. So, that's why it's a mistake. So, he realized it and took. I took, he moved here, and I checked him. He moved forward. He was trying to scare me to take all my pawns down here. But I wasn't afraid and played knight g7, which is a fatal mistake. Here, he has knight a2 saving the game for him, and on knight takes f5, for example, knight takes c3, king f2, knight a2, b5, knight c3, and the pawn's collected. Even though he's up a pawn, it's a draw. I should have played instead of that knight f6 with the idea of d5. So I played king d5, I played knight g7, he played f4, Keeping this pawn more valuable than all my queenside pawns, which is wrong. I played knight a back. I should have played king e1 with the idea of king d2 to protect the pawn. He played knight a2. Now I should have played knight f6 again. I was just screaming. But I played knight c7, which is a missed win. Because of king c6 attacking the knight, he played king c4, which is just a huge blunder here. d5, d6, d7, d8, queen. I missed it again with knight a8, 
and the knights are both on the rim, one in the corner. I wanted to take the pawn, but here just b5 and it's dead draw. He blundered again with king b5. Here I play d5, stopping the king from coming to c6. Knight takes, knight check, king takes, d6, knight b1, d7, knight check, king e2, queen, and here the grandmaster resigned. So let's come back through the whole game. One tip I would um, recommend is when you see a good move, look for a better one. Here I could have played c4 and avoided all those queenside problems. And the same thing for him. He saw the idea of f5 here, but he should have just taken the pawn and it was game over. And then after that, he made a few mistakes and I blundered a lot too. And luckily for me, I did win the game. So bye everybody and hope you enjoyed this video. Stick to the last part. Bye.